2020 was a tough one, and against all odds, 2021 has yet to make it go away. In these trying times, Danny DeVito might offer you an egg. The government might offer you between one and two thousand dollars, unless you're a recent college graduate, or you know, your mailbox is too hard to find, or whatever, but only I can offer you what you really need. Because what you need to weather out the hopefully dying days of this storm is to go back. And I don't mean back to February of 2020 when everything was fine. Because we both know that deep down inside you were long past fine by then. What you need is to go way back to that soft, warm feeling of security and routine you got from your Saturday morning cartoons and cereal. Luckily, for mostly career-related reasons, I never stopped doing that. Where? Hedgehog science books? Hedgehog werewolf costumes? Hedgehog's gifts from dad? The only gift she really wants is his approval? Now, I don't like to beat around the bush unless it makes me look smart, so this won't be a very long pitch video. You should watch Summer Camp Island, and if you have kids within a reasonable distance of the 8 to 14 demographic it's meant for, they should watch it. Because this show is so charming and wholesome that I think it literally makes you a better person. The premise is very simple. Best friends Oscar and Hedgehog, along with a slightly to significantly less important group of other kids, are dumped off at an inconspicuous island for summer camp. A summer camp island, if you will. Anyway, the minute the parents leave, the whole island turns on the magic. The camp counselors are actually witches, and pretty much everything is alive. The sun and the moon, the trees, the characters' pajamas, this empty space under the bed, everything is alive. It's ridiculous and adorable in the way everything about Summer Camp Island manages to be. As the quirky Hogwarts misadventures ensue, and the kids learn lessons about friendship and identity and not taking things too seriously or letting outside pressure make you feel like an insignificant or unworthy person. You know, normal kid stuff. The show has an off-kilter charm to it, a dulled but playfully dark edge in its writing, like a Wes Anderson movie or the best Calvin and Hobbes strips. It's reminiscent of early 2000s animation, the 11-minute imagination bombs that used to dominate the Cartoon Network lineup. The difference is, the style itself is basically inverted. The writing can't be bothered to lean into that infinite potential, instead effectively subverting it with deadpan, dialogue, and character-driven stories. There's something so whimsical about that interplay, it's hard not to smile, like the narrative equivalent of a dog sitting like a person. Episodes are individually somewhat cut and dried, with the focus going into the character dynamics on display, keeping a consistent blend of the wry humor and the narrative sweet cream. It captures the exact feeling of summer camp, or I guess what I've been told it was like since I was an anxious and antisocial child and never went. There's actual magic pretty much everywhere, and yet it's mostly background noise to the characters just being camp kids. It makes weirdly effective use of its own mundanity. Unironically, the real magic is the friends they make along the way. Or self-realization, or something. I mean, there's still plenty of magic shenanigans. It's not Glengarry Glen Ross, it's, it's a kid's show. <laughs> oh great, Hedgehog is here to save the day. The art follows suit, and by suit I mean it's delightfully quaint. It's squashy and almost abstract, and it's wrapped in these soft birthday party pastels. What you get as a result is this sort of peaceful, freeform feeling that really plays into the awkward appeal of the pace and timing. The frame is always peppered with these little visual jokes, there's negative space everywhere, and there's a lot of odd perspective work. It meshes surprisingly well with the soundtrack, which hopscotches from delicate lounge affairs to these ethereal, dreamy synth melodies. Look, you don't care about the music, I know, but there's only so many ways to say the show is quirky and charming. So why should you care? Oscar, this is gibberish. It is? Boo. 
In one of the earlier episodes, the camp puts up a local art gallery where the paintings can literally be jumped into. And these 11-year-olds all paint masterworks, not just because it's funny and kinda cute, but because Oscar's really isn't. It's fluffy and affable, like he is. Sick of being the perpetual odd one out, he goes on this makeshift rite of passage, actively trying to suffer so he can finally make good art. In the end, he still can't, but it's not a problem because the other paintings are all so emotionally exhausting that everyone flocks to his sweet little puppy thing for relief. It's kind of the whole point of the show, and to a more relevant extent, the point I'm trying to make. This isn't the kind of series that will deeply impact you emotionally. It doesn't really push boundaries or even tell much of an overarching story. But it doesn't have to, to be good and potentially important. In a time when Western animation is finally starting to truly break out of the mold of episodic children's shows, Summer Camp Island stands out as a perfectly droll antithesis, making the absolute most out of every precious moment by being, in every moment, absolutely precious. When I was first told to get working on Specs, this is the first show I turned to, and I've never had so much fun writing for something. Like its protagonist, the show just radiates joy in a way I've only ever seen from Paddington and My Neighbor Totoro. Believe me, that's high praise, that's like the holy trinity of wholesome goodness. I wouldn't normally take the time to seriously recommend something so sweet and playful among the abyssal expanse of dark and depressing media I consume, but there's a special place reserved in my heart for it, and this has been a year especially reserved for desperately clinging to it. Summer Camp Island is truly diabetes-inducing, the kind of pure and wholesome content you need to cure this year-long seasonal depression. Sure, you get diabetes instead, but come on, you want mental and physical health in this economy? Comfort viewing is something people just tend not to think about, Rewatching The Office or Friends or whatever for the hundredth time because they already know it and they don't have to think. That's definitely an option, and by now you may be on round 102. What I'm here to sell you on is more like viewing comfort. There isn't much out there that so concisely manages to press down joy into a truly accessible medium. I'd like to see it succeed. I'd also like to see you just a little bit happier, viewer. How benevolent of me. See? I'm already a better person.